This is a continued video or tutorial on identifying the uh, type of balances debit or credit. We are uh, looking at uh, the new account purchase account and purchase account is considered to be an expense item and we've learned that all expenses are always going to have a debit balance and we're going to take a minute to justify this. When you purchase, what is the transaction? Well, the transaction is purchase account debit to cash or bank. Let us say 100. This is cash purchase. You could purchase on credit. When you purchase on credit, you will write the name of creditor, the vendor. That's it. So when you do that, uh, let us make this 100 and this becomes 200. I'm writing a complex journal entry. So you could purchase on credit, done. Is there any other entry which you would write for purchase? None. Uh, it is possible that you uh, lose goods in fire or give away free samples or charity. When that happens, you write a journal entry as follows. You write charity account debit or you can write loss by fire account debit or uh, the third one was samples, free samples account debit to purchase, to purchase. Now let us post these uh, into the purchase account. This is purchase account. On the debit side, you are going to show all the purchase transactions. So you'll write to cash account and to creditors account. 100 each so 200 is the total on the debit side on the credit side you are going to write this journal entry here purchase is being credited so you're going to go here let me also determine the amounts here so let me write 100 here and let's say 40 40 and 20 okay so two purchase account meaning it's been credited on the credit side i am going to write by charity by loss by fire and by free samples. I'm just going shorthand here. So account and account. So charity is 40, 20 and 24 samples. Now you have 200 on the debit side and you have only 100 on the credit side. There is 100 which is remaining. Now you could argue that you know you intentionally kept these amounts low why don't you make them bigger well my counter argument would be all right let's do that uh, charity account how many uh, you know what is the amount that you want to assign to charity account how much charity are you going to do out of the total purchases of 200 if 200 is the value of total purchased goods with you are you going to give away all of them as charity well no you will not do that even if you do that let us say if you give away all 200 as charity, then there is no possibility of losing the rest of the goods because there is no less left, uh, no goods left now. And hence, since there is no goods left, you don't have anything to give away as samples. So you could make this, uh, let's say 200. So even if you make one of these items 200, that is the best you could do. You will have a 200 here and then there will be no balance but you will never have a higher amount here. You can't give away more goods than you have. And you could say, you know, we could have sold these goods at 300, but you know, you're not doing that. When you sell the goods at 300, you enter that in the sales account because an income comes in. Here you only show the purchase amount of the goods which are being given away. Same logic goes for loss by fire samples. So there is going to be no case wherein the amount being given away is going to be more than the amount of uh, uh, the unit, the stock of goods that you already have. Therefore, purchase account always is going to have a debit balance. The exact reverse of purchase account is sales account. Sales account is considered an income and all incomes have always a credit balance. What is the journal entry when you sell goods? You get cash. So you write cash account debit or you could get 
बैंक अकाउंट डेबिट और इफ यू डोंट रिसीव कैश और बैंक यू कुड एट बेस्ट गेट डेटर्स डेटर्स अकाउंट डेबिट एंड देन द क्रेडिट अकाउंट इज गोइंग टू बी सेल्स सेल्स अकाउंट लेट्स से यू सोल्ड हंड्रेड रुपीज वर्थ ऑफ गुड्स यू रिसीव सिक्सटीन कैश यू रिसीव थर्टी थ्रू बैंक पेमेंट बैंक अकाउंट पेमेंट एंड रिमेनिंग टेन आर टू बी रिकवर्ड फ्रॉम द कस्टमर वेन यू प्रिपेयर सेल्स अकाउंट वेन यू प्रिपेयर सेल्स अकाउंट uh you are going to write on the credit side so let us say buy and you can write buy cash account you can write buy bank account and buy debtors account and all the amounts are going to be here you have everything on the credit side there is no journal entry where you are going to write uh you know on the debit side except for one which could be you know there is a possibility of sales return Sales return means you purchased, uh, you sold goods to the uh, customer, and the customer returns. You had a policy. You said within one month any problems guaranteed. You come and you return the goods, uh, money back guarantee. So if that happens, then you could just reverse this transaction. So let us say you know some of the customers, uh, or maybe all of the customers. Let's say they come back and say you know we don't uh, want uh, these goods. So the general entry is going to be that you. Uh, reverse this uh, transaction uh, so you have a sales account debit to cancel the returns and you are going to have a two sales return account there is a new account which is open this is new you have not seen this before so in this transaction you will go to debit side and you are going to write two sales return account now even if this happens the customer cannot return you more goods than the goods that you sold to him so this amount again is going to be smaller this is going to be uh, at best equal to the amount that you sold so there you go you will never have a debit balance always the amount on the credit side is going to be higher than the amount on the debit side short term loan short term loan is a current liability all liabilities have a credit balance a credit balance all right what happens what what is the general entry when you uh, take a short term loan when you receive a loan it comes into your bank account so bank account is debit and you have a new liability called bank loan you could call it, call it short term loan as well so 100 rupees come into bank loan and there's a uh, comes comes into the bank account and there is a new liability called bank loan account the other entry that could happen is you repay the bank loan when you repay the bank loan you will say bank loan account debit you're going to cancel this you pay let's say all the amount and you're going to pay through bank so bank account the exact opposite entry or you could pay less let's say you only pay 90 and 10 is pending if you look at a bank loan account this first entry where bank loan is being credited is going to be written here so you we going to write by by bank account 100 and this transaction is going to be written here debit side we going to write to bank account So ninety, so credit side total higher than the debit side total. Ten is the balance in the loan account. Even if you pay uh, the full loan, there is no balance in the account. But you will never have a debit balance in the bank account. Let us look at a bank deposit account. Bank deposit is actually you know, equal to uh, bank balance account. I should rather you know call it bank balance. account but you could also think think of it as a fixed deposit account in which case a uh, fixed deposit will never have a credit balance a uh, fixed deposit is you know term deposit and it will always have a debit balance if only if it is a current bank account now there is something called a current bank account this is a business bank account you know this is a special account for businesses 
so the banks only extend the overdraft facility to the current uh, bank account so for bank deposits account or fixed deposit account this facility is not available saving account that we have we don't have uh, uh, you know overdraft facility so in this case i will say debit balance only but if we were talking about a current bank account then we could say it could have a debit or credit balance okay i don't think this is required because we've discussed this already cash account is a similar example and uh, the uh, bank uh, bank balance in the current account has been discussed in the previous video telephone bill telephone bill is an expense all expenses have a debit balance let me justify this when you pay any expense the journal entry is the name of the expense so telephone bill account debit to bank or to cash whichever mode you are opting for that is it there is no other journal entry you you can you know figure out if there is more if you if you do not pay yeah there is another journal entry if you do not pay then instead of bank account you will say outstanding outstanding telephone bill account that's it so it is being debited you go to debit side you can write bank if you have paid it and you will write outstanding uh, bill account if you have not paid it there is no posting on the other side it is always going to have a debit balance so all expenses again are going to have a debit balance okay then you have outstanding telephone uh, bill account this is different from the previous uh, one this is a liability this is a liability this is outstanding expense this is not uh, the expense this is an outstanding expense and all outstanding expenses are actually liabilities and liabilities have a credit balance so do not confuse uh, do not get confused between telephone expenses uh, account and outstanding telephone expenses account these are two different things so when do you record a transaction in the outstanding telephone bill well we just looked at it uh, in the previous uh, general entry here you have telephone bill account debit to outstanding telephone bill if i were to let me just post this entry let me take this 50 paid 50 unpaid now this outstanding uh, uh, telephone expenses account is being prepared and i'm going to take this to next slide and i'm going to post post it to the credit side so we are posting on the credit side so it's coming from the previous slide and we are going to write by telephone expenses you did the ones which you did not pay how much did you not pay 50 only remaining have been paid 50 were paid so only this 50 should be written although telephone bill account says debit of 100 but the outstanding expenses uh, uh, account is credited is being credited with only 50 rupees so we're going to write by and there you go this is the outstanding telephone expenses account in short the other general entry which could be uh, posted here is when you actually pay the outstanding expenses and when you pay the outstanding expenses the general entry is going to be outstanding telephone uh, expenses account debit and you're going to pay in cash or through bank and you can write so this is being debited so it will come here to bank or to cash and 50 and there will be nil balance there will be no balance but there will not be a debit balance till the time you do not pay this there will always be a credit balance all liabilities always have a credit balance in their account let us look at a loan account loan is also a liability and we just discussed all liabilities will always have a credit balance when you take the loan the journal entry is you know bank account debit money comes into your account to the loan account and we actually just did a, a discussion on short term loan so these are you know both are, both are the same things short term loan or long term loan both are liability same transactions uh, you know you could repay uh, these uh, uh, repay these uh, loans in installments or in one lump sum 
uh, it is also possible that you uh, do not pay the interest on the loan and it gets added to the principal that is uh, you know one interesting transaction as well but none of that is going to affect the fact that the bank uh, loan account or liability account will always have a credit balance so let me just articulate this as well so this is a loan account it is being credited so it will go to credit side we're going to write buy bank account let us say this is 100 and 100 so we'll write 100 so there can be an interest uh, interest account debit uh, let's say this was 10 and you paid 5 out of this and remaining are added to the bank loan account so if they are added to the bank loan account then we're going to write bank loan account and 5 or if not added then they could become outstanding expense in which case again it's a liability so instead of bank loan you would say outstanding interest account but i think we did one uh, you know practice problem where we where we said the interest will be added to the principal so let's just take that so in this case bank account bank loan account is being created again you're going to write here by interest you're, you've not paid the interest now what has happened is loan has gone up to 110 so nothing is coming on the opposite side unless you pay the loan when you pay the loan then you have loan account debit to bank account now you will have a transaction here so let me remove this and you will say to bank account and you are going to pay uh, you know 100 110 at the most but not more than that so you will never have a debit balance uh, in a uh, in a loan account therefore all liabilities are going to have a credit balance that is it so we've gone through a bunch of accounts and we looked at uh, you know what could be various possible transactions in this account and is it is there any condition under which our learning uh, is going to be violated uh, the rules are going to be violated uh, the learning is the assets and expenses are going to have a debit balance and the liabilities and incomes are going to have a credit balance. The only exception that we have seen is the current bank account. So current bank account which is a special account given to businesses could have a debit balance, could have a credit balance. But other than that this rule is going to stay. Alright, this is the end of the tutorial. I'll uh, see you in the next video.